Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video I'll be making a custom dining table that includes some really cool techniques and design elements like the solid bronze lead castings. So stay tuned to see how it all comes together. So to start this project off, I had to make a full size prototype of the dining table leg and this is going to be used by the foundry to make their moulds. So I started by making the main body of the leg and then I made both the top and the bottom pieces which are going to sandwich the tabletop and the final joint between the leg and the top. And then I laminated these rectangles of MDF together and that's just going to give me the meat to be able to grind away the curves that I want on the underside of the leg. So here I'm starting to carve away the majority of the material with my angle grinder and an Arbitec power carving disc. I jumped between this and also a flat disc on the angle grinder to remove the majority of the material and then it was just cleaning up and finessing the curves by hand. Now that the form was all finished up, I dropped them off to the foundry and I could get started on the rest of the build. I made a start on the timber portion of this dining table by rough machining all the boards to thickness and then I let them acclimatise in the workshop over the weekend. After the boards had a couple of days to acclimatise, I then made a start ripping them all down to size and then machining them once again to final dimension. Because the two halves of this tabletop will be put through a wide belt sander after glue up, I'm leaving them about a millimetre or two thicker than the final final dimension and that way once they go through the belt sander I can take it right down to the 45mm thickness that I'm after. Once I had added dominoes down the length of each board for alignment, it was onto the glue up. And the reason I'm gluing up the tabletop in two halves is because the wide belt sander that these two are going to get put through after glue up can only take about 900 maximum width and this tabletop is going to be 1100 total. So I'll put both halves through the wide belt sander and then I can glue the whole top up knowing that each section is nice and flat. Unfortunately, I don't have my own wire belt sander in the workshop, so I cart the two halves of the top back to my local timber yard, and they're kind enough to let me run them through their machine. With the two halves sanded up, now it's on to the final glue up. With the tabletop all in one piece and out of the clamps, I could start cutting the top to final length and width, and then I can install the C-channel on the underside. So I'm going to keep the installation of the C channel pretty brief because I feel like there's so many other great channels on YouTube who have shown this process before and chances are if you're watching this video you've probably seen this done time and time again to keep the tabletop flat over time. So you router out the slots for both sides, you inset the center portion so that the C channel sits flush, then you screw in the threaded inserts and you can install your C channel. Here I'm starting to make the templates I'm going to use to shape the dining table. It's going to have a nice curve on each end as well as a slight taper towards the ends of the table. 
Originally it was going to have a very shallow curve from end to end, which you can see me making here. But my client decided, and I think they were definitely correct here, that we would just go for a slight taper at each end, leaving a flat area in the center of the table, which I think turned out really well. With the templates made, here I'm drawing out the intended shape on the table, which I then sent to my client to make sure they were happy with everything, and then I could start shaping. With the table shape finalized, now I just gave the whole thing a rough sand and then it was on to the complex task of fitting the legs to the table. I made some router templates to correspond with the leg castings. There's one for the top surface of the tabletop and for the underside and that will give me the rough joint for the legs and then I can fine tune the fit of each leg with hand tools. I used the templates I had made as a guide for the ball bearing on my pattern bit and the router and then after making a first pass I could take the template off and use the table itself as the reference surface to get to full depth. With the legs back from the casting shop, now it was time to refine them all just a little bit and get them ready for test fitting. I don't really show a whole lot of me fitting the legs up to the dining table because it was really just a whole lot of going back and forth. Test fitting the leg, taking it off again, shaving a little bit more timber off, test fitting back and forth until the fit was right. With all four legs fit up to the dining table top, I then took it all apart and numbered each leg just to make sure they all went back in the right place. With that, the only thing left to do on the legs was to drill the mounting holes for the hardware and then the legs are going to be collected by the patina specialists and they're just going to add an aged bronze look to these legs, which is what my clients are going for on this project.
With the legs complete, I could now start work on the final shaping of the tabletop. The top is going to have a tapered bull nose on the edge, which as you can see here, means running the round over bit on both faces of the table and then planing down that extra material to give a nice tapered effect. I started with the power planer here to remove the majority of the material and then I started cleaning everything up with a hand plane. And now I could repeat the same process on the top side of the table. You can see I've circled any minor surface cracking that I've noticed on the top of the table and I'm just covering everything with a coat of spray lacquer and that way the black epoxy I'm going to use to fill the cracks won't stain the table at all. Now I flipped the table over and started installing the threaded inserts where the leg hardware will connect and I just add a few drops of CA glue when I screw these in just to ensure that they don't go anywhere. With the legs back from the patina specialists, I could test fit each leg just to make sure that all the mounting holes lined up correctly, as well as scribing around the legs themselves just to make sure that the top surface of the tabletop and the leg details matched up and were perfectly level. And this final shaping could just be done with a hand plane and then a sander. I then gave a very slight round over to all the interior edges of the joint to give it a seamless heirloom fit. And then it was on to every woodworker's favourite time of a project which is sanding. But I won't make you sit through all of that so let's get straight to the exciting part which is putting the finish on. The finish my clients went with for the tabletop was just the Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus in the charcoal colour. I've been using Rubio Monocoat on a few of my larger table projects recently and I'm really enjoying it. My only issue so far is just the annoyance of having to fiddle around with the syringes to measure out the correct amount. Especially with the smaller Part B can, I find it's really hard to actually get it out of the can. But other than that, I really like the product and I think it's definitely something I'll keep using in the majority of my projects. As you can see I'm working in zones here just to make the application a little bit easier and that's one of the great things about Rubio is that it blends really well with itself even when it's applied in zones like this. Now the work the patina guys did on the legs has already protected it from oxidization but I just wanted to get a little bit more of a sheen on these legs so I added an extra layer of paste wax and then just buffed it out with a cloth and that got me a little bit more of a gloss finish which is what I wanted.
And now it's the moment of truth, final assembly. this build guys. This table was an absolute blast to make and it's always a real privilege working with clients who are really looking for like a statement piece, which are the pieces that I enjoy to make the most. And it was really awesome to get to incorporate a custom casting into this project. They turned out really well and I think they really add something to the piece. So now this is going to get shipped off to my client in Queenstown. It's probably going to get shipped in pieces so I'll be flying down to assemble the legs in the new home and hopefully I can get some really cool pictures of it in place, which I'll be posting on my social media and my website in the next month or two. So again, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.